Okay, today I'm on a little journey, um, trying to get more horsepower, and the reason why I am doing this is because our other car um, doesn't have an uh, air conditioner. It doesn't. It only have a water pump and an alternator. That's it. It's an old car. It's a Honda. Um, it. Um, a Honda uh, CRX and it's pretty old anyway um, older than me that's for sure um, and recently um, I well uh, this was a, there was an accident on this uh, on this car about uh, two and a half close to three years now and if you see the spray foam right there, um, sorry the lighting's kind of bad, but the spray foam right here, um, that's our air conditioner port right there. That orange thing right there, that's a spray foam. And what happened is it actually went, um, when the accident was on the, uh, uh, the passenger side, it actually uh, broke a little bit on, the, on that. So, um, and from then on, we didn't really repair it because it was costly. Then, um, recently, um, I discovered that our, um, um, compressor here, which I have a video on, it wasn't, it was making noises and anytime it get kicks in, it makes noises. So that tells me that the fan, I mean not the fan, the bearing on here is actually going bad I think because if I spin it enough you will hear a noise on that. So that's when I knew that I had to bypass it for now. And then when I did that I took the, when I did the bypass on the belt here we had to eliminate that and then you have to take this out in order uh, the idler in order for it to have clearance and then we use a shorter belt at this time when i did that the engine cranks a lot better it cranks it fired up right away it is a lot faster and during that inspections and through all that it, it it's a lot better now so um but then when I feel this here the the fan here it, there's no movement either and when the engine's on it's actually a lot um, I guess the, the 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 clutch on that must have been seized so the um, uh, the clutch is right there I guess um, and it spin like 24 7 which I did not like um so now i'm on a new journey i am actually going to do like most people and they said that they do get horsepower on this extra horsepower by going with the um um uh electrical uh fans instead of this because you you have to remember this is uh, according to this guy on YouTube, it's actually, this actually, an average of this fan is 30 horsepower for the, even at 15 horsepower to power this fan. But if I put on a, um, electrical fan, uh, it'll suck the juice out of the alternator. But here's, here's, here's the thing. Those fans only it's only about one horsepower I checked the rating on them it is uh, if I use the 10 inch uh, I'm going to try to use two 10 inch which is about four amps each meaning two of those would have taken eight amps total and that would be sufficient enough for this car here's another thing as the air passes through here, it's hitting the condenser, um, the AC condenser. So my new journey is I'm going to take that air condenser out totally. And what happened is, what happened is, 
if you take that out this actually gonna be a lot uh, uh, natural draft gonna come in as the fan as the car moves so it's actually gonna cool even better because if you look underneath here it actually has to pass through the condenser first before it actually passed through your radiator uh, so by removing this I'm gonna cool it even more but here's another thing that I discovered which is very important on this is that this is this is why I hate these cars it is called on-demand heating system okay what they do is they trapped all your water in the engine here because this is where the water pump is they trap all the water there first once the heat reach up to about I believe it's like a hundred something degree I'm not too sure on that but I have to check the spec on that once it reaches a certain amount that thing actually passes up this would open up uh, there's a there's a like a thermal switch underneath here if you open this right here I forgot what it's called but I probably would put a, um, a descriptions in, 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 in at this time so you know what that is called anyway there's a little heat switch it's like a thermal switch it opens up then it will circulate through your through your radiator that's the only time that it actually would cool down what I did was I actually cut that thermostat for experimenting because we had to replace it in our other car what happened is when I did that we can drove around like 20 minutes and I was able to touch this but I can drive right now five minutes not even five minutes I won't be able to touch this no more and the car was all cool and stuff but the only thing you don't have is on your on-demand heating system so your heating system would have to reach a certain amount before you actually would get warm in the car now if you live in Alaska that would be great turn that thing on your car will stay cool you will always get your heat um, you would have to drive probably twice the distance before you actually would get the heat normally you will trap the heat in there in your engine and then it would um, once you reach a certain temperature then that valve would release so that means your engine it's already hot already so that means you have your hot water right there and that's what they call on-demand heat sort of like in your house now that that's what they do well in this case because they trap heat in there your engine is always hot and like I said when I discover that I release that we can drive around like 20 minutes and I can still touch this part right here because the cooling system was always cool and we weren't uh, and the engine wasn't hot at all to my surprise so now including this 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 um, journey that I'm going through for gaining not only horsepower but eliminating that little switch which is going to be in another video explaining that pretty much it's pretty much the same thing here but I want to do it separately so in case people want just to do that I was gonna do is what I was gonna do is in the summer I would open it I would buy another piece damage it not damage it but release it uh, that little valve that opens up it's like a thermal switch like and when that opens up it would release it so instead of that I would just have that as a spacer because they make them like a like a little spacer so instead of that I would put them in and it's always on so the water would always circulate through your your radiator and then back into the engine again so it's like a 24-7 circulation system but because of on-demand heat they trap that using that so that way when this reached a certain temperature then it opens but the problem is is that even in the summer you don't need on-demand heat seriously you don't but the manufacturer doesn't know that the manufacturer when they design these cars they're gonna say wait a minute what about in the winter when people need on-demand well guess what what about summer 
So anyway, that's what I discovered. So I'm going to make a separate video doing that right there. But because this is a, a horsepower journey and eliminating the things that I don't need. That's why I'm included here. Also too, if you notice, when it's on demand, the heater core, those two right there, those two pipes right there, in there, underneath these uh, relays, those two right there, it comes to here, and it goes into your engine. This is one of them up here. The other one's a little below, right to the engine itself. This one connect to your water pump, okay? Because that's your water pump right there. What happened is, if I bypass that, switch right there, I would have to revert that water back into it. So I'm going to make a little switch right here. So it's going to divert it. Instead of going into the car, it's going to divert it. So in the summer, all I have to do, it actually would just make a diversion. So that means the water in the engine would just circulate through here and come back through here to the engine and then that way it will pump through here get to that switch right there that I told you about that thermal switch and then it just circulates so it just make a complete circuit really but here's the here's the part because of that complete circuit and because of the on-demand system on demand heater like I said it will always be hot and it'll be hot in the car as well remind you even when you don't turn on your heat that does not mean that thing is not open that thing is hot as well so that actually would eliminating the heat inside your car as well in the summer so by doing that it's going to eliminate a lot of things and it's going to cool my system and here's a here's a funny part when i when i kill this here what we did was we drove uh, half an hour and what we did was we turn on the heat when I bypass this here um, when I kill that 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 stupid freaking um, thermal switch we drove that with the heat during the summer and we turned it on it was hot but here's the thing I was able to touch the engine still after even half an hour so that's what I'm on right now it's a journey of getting rid of all the necessary stuff that make the engine work harder and there were people who f who would argue against like you're gonna drain more power in your alternator sure nothing is free please remember that nothing is free but like I said this here since the clutch is seized already and look it's not even moving correctly if I move this, 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 this whole water pump is moving inside as well. And look how, how hard it is. Now imagine, imagine your car during starting would have not only to spin to get air through, and it also have to get that. And when the engine is on full, like 3000 RPM, this fan here works at 3000 rpm an example or 4000 rpm and that these are plastic this is no way so you're actually putting more drags than you think so by converting to electric fan i would eliminate that right there but the trade-off like i said nothing is free okay this fan here let's say right now is ceased and if they say an average is 30 horsepower at 4000 rpm i believe it would be about 30 horsepower to, to, to power this stupid fan because remember this is seized no longer working look at that it's not even pushing no more they, they made it like a clutch system in there that it stays on a certain amount of RPM. That's it. But because it's because it's probably got rusted and jammed in or whatever, probably rusted. That's the only thing that these things would happen. It stays at full RPM, and you're not saving gas. 
you're not saving your engine, your engine will work harder, crank would be even worse, blah, blah, blah. But the trade-off on that is that I am taking only one horsepower, or so-called eight amps, from the alternator. This alternator is 110 amps. So it'll be enough, like let's say if I eliminate that, it'll probably pump out like right now since this is on, I would say the, the RPM on this, I would probably would say about 80 amps. That's it, that's all you're producing, it's about 80 amps. But if you take the fan off, that would contribute to that. I probably gain 10 amps right there extra. Even at 15 amps, even at eight amps, then actually the energy I got from that, it's actually free. So that means the new fan would use no energy whatsoever if I am able to get my alternator to work to its capacity. Currently right now, I believe it's only about, if I am lucky, you will only get about 80 amps out of this. That's it, if I'm lucky. That would be enough to power everything because as you know, you can see, the, the car is still working, I'm not complaining, so that means it produces enough power to, to run everything. But I can bet you, once I release this from the engine, I can bet you I would gain more horsepower, plus I would gain more amperage out of my alternator, which charge the battery would be even better. So that's where I'm at. Um, that's what this journey is and I am going to post a lot of things um, um, as you can see I have already removed the grill already and if you look down there look at that all the stuff down there I didn't even know that those things were all over there and it's all dirty dust leaves sand which I have to repair which I have to um, blast that out and then I've noticed that I would even get more air coming through here so my radiator would even work even more efficient what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a little grill I'm gonna invent a little um, screen up here to protect more stuff coming through here so that way like dirt and stuff like that won't get through here like that so I'm gonna cut a screen out and put on front of it Sort of like this right here. If you notice, look at all the the, the 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 rocks and stuff right there that it's on there. See them all? All those rocks in the grill itself, in the um, air conditioner condenser. So once I remove that, I would have to protect this to prolong that longer. Um, so that's where I'm at. And uh, I guess it's a journey of, a, uh, of of learning, I guess. Um, but, uh, since I don't need all this stuff no more, why, why would I leave them all in here? Plus, it'll give me, look at the engine now. It'll give me plenty of room to work with. Um, uh, the shrouds, probably, I'm gonna put the shroud back in just to protect some of them. Um, we removed that, sh the old shroud long ago, and we didn't put it back because, due, like I said, due to an accident, we wouldn't put that back. So now look at it. All the grease is from the fans all thrown all over the place. So it's going to make this car a lot cleaner, that's for sure. And I will make some protection underneath here so stuff won't fly in and stuff like that. We do have a guard underneath there, but that's not enough. So, but that's another thing. But other than that... Um, that's what this video is about is to gain horsepower and if you one of those people that don't care about air conditioner uh, follow this build and or revamp I would say um, then you would get your then you would learn something from it and that's the whole point of me posting this up is to 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 have some someone to learn something from it I guess um, because there's no need uh, if, 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 if this is seized and you don't care and you live in like Alaska or something and you this, this would be more of a reason to do if you live in Alaska because there's no way you're gonna need your air conditioner except for the summer but even in summertime you would probably be cooler than, than us here in, in New Hampshire 
Um, so I would suggest to, to do it completely if you live in Alaska. Um, and it's pretty simple to remove. You don't really need to remove much. You just need to remove this here, your compressor. And then your line goes through here for your um, condenser here. And then there's two connector down here, down here itself. And then you would have to release it from your dryer. This is your dryer. Either you can unbolt it from here or unbolt it here. If you want more extra room, then take this whole dryer separately. So I would, I'm gonna unbolt mine here, out through here. And then there's another line underneath there where that flashlight is. There's a line right there that goes into this compartment right here. That's your your coal side right there. Uh, uh, they call it the high. Uh, this one they call it the low, but <laughs> it should have been the opposite. But anyway, um, that's what uh, uh, I guess is hot is high and low is is is, is low temperature. Um, high and low but <laughs> anyway to reach his own I guess but that's about it on this video for now I'm going to end it because like I said I, I I'm doing this for room and I'm doing this for horsepower so uh, for now I'm gonna end this video and I guess I would see you in uh, all of my video because this is where my journey begins